Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Welcome po sa isa na namang episode ng online series ni ng Pamantasan kung saan ang pagkatuto ay walang hangganan. Ito ang PNU Talks. Ako nga pala si Mr. Jonard B. Galicia, aired all the way from Tabuk City, Kalinga, at ako ay inyong learning from home buddy sa episode na ito. Today we'll talk about how to develop a growth mindset as an essential key for academic success. I-comment ang inyong mga katanungan at mga kuro-kuro tungkol sa ating episode ngayong araw. Huwag kalimutang i-like at i-share ang episode natin. Simulan na po natin ang ating discussion. Please allow me to share my screen. All right. So, we'll talk about growth mindset. Personally, I know that this topic is timely and relevant as we face the challenges and the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. I know that there are a lot of your plans that didn't come true. There are a lot of plans that didn't realize. There are a lot of goals that were limited. There are a lot of errors or some parts of your growth had been, you know, had been minimized because of the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. But I also want to remind you that most of our great life lessons or our valuable life lessons were derived or were learned from, from our experiences in facing, a challenge, in facing some challenges, in facing some circumstances. So my purpose for this discussion is that to invite you to pay attention to your mindset as we cope, as we face the COVID-19 pandemic. Because even if this is a challenge, even if this is a circumstance, we can still generate some helpful mindset that we can bring wherever we go, whenever we face some challenges. Because we know the fact that this COVID-19 pandemic will not stay, you know, we will not stay forever with us. It will stay long, but it will not stay forever in in our communities, in our countries, in the world. But the lessons that we learn from these challenges, the lessons that we learn from these circumstances, the mindset, the helpful mindset that we generate from these challenges will will also stay with us and we can use them in our future challenges. So to start with my discussion, I want to ask this question. How do you respond to challenges? When you are facing some challenges, when you're facing a challenge or, you know, um, task, how do you usually respond to it? At least, what are your thoughts? What are your words? What are your expressions? Do you say, ang hirap, di ko yan kaya. It's so difficult, I can't manage that. Or, hindi ako magaling, di ko yan kaya. I'm not good enough, I can't do that. Or, hanggang dito na lang ang kaya ko. You're saying your your limitations. You're saying that the things that can you can do has, has limits, okay? Or di ko yan gagawin, di nga kaya ng iba. Eh. You're comparing yourself to other people. Or pagawa na lang sa iba kasi di ko yan kaya. You're saying that your capabilities is inferior to the capabilities of other people. Or you're the type of person who would say, kayang-kaya ko ito, okay? Kakatuan ng bata tayo. No? We always say that. Kayang-kaya ko yan, I can do that, okay? Or you will say, Subukan ko kung anong ma- ang makaya ko. We'll try what I, whatever I can do, no? whatever I can manage. Okay? Hindi ko pa yan kaya sa ngayon. This is, you know, it, it sounds negative, but the power of yet, the power of pa. Okay? Sinasabi mo na hindi mo pa yan kaya ngayon. But you are giving, you're giving an idea. You're giving a, an idea na next time you're able to manage it. That's the power of yet. And that's so important in the context of growth mindset. Walang mawawala kung susubukan ko ito. This is also the power of trying. And that's one message of growth mindset. That there's no, you know, nothing wrong in trying. Nothing wrong in, in trying or in our attempts. Because when we try, then we fail. That's not a pure failure. We know that it's not a pure failure because we learn from failures. We became aware of our limitations. We became aware of the things that we need to improve. And that's the message of growth mindset. The power of yet, the power of trying. So, <clears throat> Based on studies, no? based on studies, there are two people, there are two categories of people whenever they face challenges. Some people are having fixed mindset or some, uh, some other people are having growth mindset. So based on the questions I shared a while ago, San Kadito, are you the person who is having a fixed mindset or the person who is having a growth mindset? But what's the difference between the two? When you are having a fixed mindset, your belief is that your qualities are fixed, your traits are fixed, therefore they cannot be changed. 
You're saying that your talents, your skills, the things that you can do are already fixed and you can't improve. You can't change no matter what. That's fixed mindset. You're saying that the things that you learned, the, 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 the skills and abilities that you have are already innate, already wired in your brain. Therefore, you can't change them no matter what. But when you are a person who's having a growth mindset, your belief is that learning or achievement and abilities can grow with time and effort. Completely opposite from fixed mindset. Your belief is that your traits, your skills and abilities, your achievement are not fixed. They can be changed, they can be improved, and they can be developed with the use of time and effort. That's the important message of growth mindset. The importance of time and effort. It's saying that with the time and effort, we can still grow, we can still change, we can still improve. So at this point in time, which mindset do you have? Are you having a fixed mindset or a growth mindset? If you know that, you know, most of the time you believe that you, you believe that your traits are fixed, your, your, your skills and abilities are fixed. Nothing wrong about that. Because, you know, <clears throat> fixed mindset to growth mindset is a continuum and not a dichotomy. When you started to become fixed mindset, you can still progress to a growth mindset. It's not a dichotomy of a uh, it's not a dichotomy like, you know, A or B. Pero ito, A to B. You can start with fixed mindset then progress towards growth mindset with proper intention and intervention. Okay? So that's the purpose of my discussion now. If you're having a, growth, a fixed mindset, I'm inviting you to progress towards growth mindset because studies suggest that having growth mindset will help you attain your goals, will help you realize your plans, will help you, most especially the learners that we have in the classroom, to achieve higher academic performance. So what are the difference between these two? I wanna share with you this very important infographic mm, lifted from the studies of Dr. Carol Dweck. Dr. Dweck is one of the lead researchers about mindsets, especially, uh, especially growth mindset. So fixed mindset or FMS and growth mindset is GMS is, a, is really opposites. No? Are they, these two are really opposites. So for fixed mindset, they view intelligence as static. If you say static, it cannot change, it cannot go up, it cannot go down. But for growth mindset, they view intelligence or let's just say abilities or skills and abilities can be developed, okay? So because, you know, they view intelligence in different ways, they also have different goals. The goal of a fixed mindset is to look smart. However, the goal of a growth mindset is to learn. So it's also important to check the goal or the mindset of our learners in the classroom or in the, in the um, learning environments that we have. What is their desire? Is their desire to look smart in front of their parents? Is their desire to look smart in front of their classmates? Or their desire is to learn and improve so that they can attain skills for future challenges, okay? Because they have two different goals again. They also have different tendencies. For fixed mindset, in terms of challenges, people with fixed mindset tend to avoid challenges because when they face challenges, it's a threat to their desire to look smart. It's a threat to their ego, if that's the case. But people with GMS, they embrace challenges because they see challenges as learning opportunities. And that's my message during, my, during the start of my discussion. This COVID-19 pandemic will give you a lot of sub-challenges or other consequences but let's take the, the most out of it. Let's embrace it and learn from it, okay? Because we can learn a lot of life lessons from this COVID-19 pandemic. If you have FMS, you tend to give up easily due to obstacles. You see obstacles as walls. You see obstacles as, you know, a threat to your desire to look smart. However, if you have GMS, you persist despite obstacles. You see obstacles as walls. You try to penetrate them. You try to work out on them, look for strategies on how you can, you can, you can persist these this obstacles. In terms of effort, one of the important messages of growth mindset is how we view effort. Because FMS or fixed mindset people view effort as fruitless or walang katuturan. When they see, when they see effort, bakit pa ako nag effort Eh, talagang hindi naman ako magaling. Bakit pa ako nag effort Eh, wala naman makupuntahan ito kasi naipanganak akong ganito. That's FMS. But when you have a growth mindset, you see effort as a path to mastery. 
when you, you, you try to exert effort, effort, and effort, you know that every effort you exert, it will lift you to the next step towards your goals. For feedback, if you are a person who is fixed, you always ignore useful feedback. Because again, it's a threat to your ego. You see feedback as, you know, you, you see feedback as threat to, 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 your, to your desire to look smart, to look good. However, if you have GMS, you learn from criticism. You take this as opportunities for you to gather feedback about yourself as an opportunity to improve more, to develop your, your present state. So that's the difference between how they look at feedback, okay? For fixed mindset, again, they are threatened by other successes. They don't feel good when they see people who are better than them, when they're surrounded by people who are better than them. If they're not threatened by other successes, they will look for other people who are worse than them, just for them to satisfy their desire to look smart and to look good. However, if you have a growth mindset, you are inspired by other successes. Okay? You learn, you, you, you get inspiration, you get coaching, you get mentoring from other people who are, who, whom you know that are, whom you know na successful. Okay? So that's the difference between the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. Again, if you started to be fixed, there's no problem about it as long as you are open to growth because you can start with that, then work on it so that you can develop this important mindset in our lives. Okay, why is it so important to, 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 to pay attention to our mindset? Why is it important to pay attention to, to growth mindset? Look at this in a conversation between these two characters. Okay, so the first character would say, hey, bro, brain, look, is showing the, the good things in life, the good things in life. But the brain is so busy. And he said, not now, can't you see? I'm busy, so I'm busy, see brain. Busy si brain to meet in ng bad things in life. Busy si brain, you know, nagmamagnify ng mga bad things in life. You know what? That's our default. Our default is to pay attention to the bad things in life. Because studies suggest that bad is more powerful than good. We always pay attention to the bad things in life, to our bad qualities, to our bad traits, rather than, you know, the good things in life. Okay? For example, pumasok ka sa work or pumasok ka sa school, may nagsabi sa'yo, or pagpasok mo sa school, sarap ng gising mo, sarap ng breakfast mo, sarap ng sakay mo going to school. Masaya ka. Pero pagdating mo sa klasyo, may nagsabi, oh, ang pangit ng buhok mo. You know what? That one negative thought, that one negative interaction will ruin your whole day. Wala nang kwenta yung four or five na magagandang bagay na nangyari sa'yo. Kasi nga, bad is more powerful than good because our default is to pay attention to the bad things in life. That's why we need to have more intention. We need to, to, to practice paying attention to the good things in life because when we always pay attention to the bad things in life, then our mindset will be consumed to, 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 you know, to our limitations, to our deficiencies. That's why at this point in time, I'm inviting you to, to pay attention to the good things in life so that it will uh, so that your growth mindset your belief system will generate more helpful thoughts <clears throat> i'm going to share with you this this pyramid no? that our thoughts the way how we think our behaviors and our feelings are all interrelated so the way how we think really you know affects our behaviors our actions and how we feel so if you have a negative thought it will also lead to negative behaviors and negative emotions. Same with thing with behaviors. If you have good behaviors, good actions, it will also lead to you know, some good cognitions, some good thoughts, and later on, some emotions. So they are all, they're all interrelated. Let's just try to, let's try to concentrate and focus on how thoughts can really you know, impact feelings and emotions and, of course, behaviors. We have to understand that the mindset is a belief system, and this belief system is composed of different building blocks of thoughts. So when we have good thoughts about ourselves, when we have good thoughts as we face some challenges, it can also generate good emotions, good feelings, and good behaviors in our lives. So at this point of my discussion, I'm inviting you to, to, to pay attention to our belief system and to, to 
pay attention to its outcome so that we would know if we are um, nurturing a growth mindset belief system. The question is that, can we still change? I'm saying, I'm telling you now that, <clears throat> you know, our default is we pay attention to the negative things in life. We're saying that there are people who are having fixed mindset. Their belief is that, you know, their capabilities are wild, are innate and whatnot. But there are also people who are having growth mindset who believes that they can still change, they can still grow. But who is correct? Okay? San tayo maniniwala with this question? Can we still change? Science says, yes, we can still change. Okay? Because most of the time during New Year, we keep on promising to change, we keep on promising to change. Do we still have the capacity to change? Or we're just operating from our own defaults, from our own innates? But science says yes. The first concept about, uh, about changes is brain neuroplasticity. When we say brain neuroplasticity, it refers to the physiological changes in the brain that happens as the result of learning and our interactions with our environment. You have to understand that whenever we teach in the classroom, whenever we learn from the classroom, it's not only we store knowledges, it's not only we, we acquire skills, but the brain physical form, the brain physical processes also change. Because, you know, the brain represents or the connections of the neurons represent our learning and our interactions with our environment. So how does the brain change? How the brain changes? First one, <clears throat> neurogenesis. Our brain changes through neurogenesis. What do we mean by neurogenesis? Neurogenesis is the production of neurons and neurons are our brain cells, okay? We have to bear that in mind that neurons and brain cells are all the same. And we are, learnings are represented by the connection of two or more neurons, okay? So for neurogenesis, it says here that it's not only prenatal stage. It's not only when we were young, the we produce and bring that in the neurons. Even now, even when we grow older, there is still some, uh, there's a region in our brain that still produces neurons. So we don't have storage full or whatnot. Because if, in the concept of neurogenesis, the production of neurons doesn't stop even when we get, when we get old. But of course, the, the speed of uh, production of neurons ay mas mabagal na when we grow older. Okay, compared to nasa womb pa tayo ng mga nanay natin. But again, the production of neurons will give us a clue that we can still change, that we, that we still have, you know, body mechanisms to be used for us to, to, to improve in terms of memory, in terms of thinking processes. Second one, new neural connections. You have to understand that a skill, a learning, is represented by the connections of neurons, the connections of our dendrites, okay? But how can we create new connections of neurons so that we can have a new skill? It's through practice, okay? I am now, um, I am relaying to you the message of the importance of practice, okay? Deliberate practice for us to enhance neural connections. Because when we learn the skill, it generates connections, no? Pero kapag hindi natin na master, weak yung connection ng neurons na yun. But when we do practice, we keep on doing that, then we are strengthening the connections of the neurons and that can change our capability to do things. For example, una pa hindi ka na magaling, hindi ka talaga magaling sa drawing, you can say I'm not born to be a good, you know, to be good uh, to be a good person na uh, magdrawing. But when you do practice, practice, okay? The neural connections for the skill of drawing can also improve, can also be strengthened. And later on, you can you can draw, not really gifted, not really talented, but you can still draw to a, to a satisfactory level, okay? Third one, okay, that's the strength and degree connections, nourishment of neurons through physical exercise, okay? Of course, our neurons are still part of our body system. It's a brain cell. It needs nourishment. But you know what? Our brain cells can improve, can be nourished, not only through thinking, not only through cognitive exercises, but also during physical exercises especially cardiovascular exercises, it can help us nourish our neurons through a protein called BDNF, no? So pag nourish ang neuron natin, of course, they can function better during our thinking systems. And studies suggest that when we do at least 30 minutes of cardiovascular exercises, 
it nourishes our neurons to function better, to function well during our thinking systems. Lastly, weaken dendritic connections. Sabi natin kanina, we can strengthen dendritic connections through practice, but our brain can also change when there are some when there are dendritic connections that are weakened. Okay, paano nangyayari yan? Of course, may mga skills kasi tayong unang natutunan ng mga bata tayo, but as we grow older, hindi na natin nagagamit yon. So parang puno din, no? When there are weak, I mean, when there are leaves na hindi na rin nagagamit, okay? So, <clears throat> pinuputol natin yon para mag-create or ng bagong stem, bagong, bagong leaves. Ganun din yung brain natin, no? Kapag may mga hindi na rin nagagamit na dendritic connections, no? So, kusa yung brain natin na pinapatay yung connections na yun. Is that a good one or a bad one? Of course, a good one kasi it can clean up the neural pathways. Okay? Mas, um, mas strong yung, mas um, diverted or direct yung neural pathways kapag may mga, mga hindi na, you know, wala nang disruptions kasi may mga dendritic connections na hindi nagagamit at na, napatay na ng brain. Okay? So, those are some, some important science concepts or physiological changes that brain occurs when we, that, that can, can help us believe that we can still change, okay? Next one, <clears throat> open to change and growth minded. I want to invite you again that we can still change. Science says our brain is changing, so we can still have a proper growth mindset. So how to foster a growth mindset? At home or in school, of course. First, teach children that their brains can grow and change. That's my discussion a while ago. Um, brain is like a muscle that we can, we can exercise, we can foster, we can nourish so that it can grow bigger. It can function more, more functions, okay? So teach our children that our brain is not really static. It can still change, okay? It can be exercised. That's why I expose them to both cognitive exercises and physical exercises. Second one. Monitor the messages given to learners about how abilities are developed, okay? Huwag natin sabihin na, oh, talagang bagsak ka sama, talagang tayo pangalak ka, hindi magaling sa math, eh. But we can say, oh, you need more practices, you need more effort to, to understand the problem sets so that you can have, you know, higher scores in your math quizzes, okay? So the message here is that when we give feedback to our students, feedback that should be geared towards growth mindset and not fixed mindset, Feedback anchored from a belief that people can, people can still change. Their skills and abilities can still be enhanced. Okay? Or may anak ka, no? Ma, patulong nga sa assignment pa. Sabihin mo, um, okay, dad mo na lang kasi may pangalak siya magaling sa, sa physics, sa math, or whatnot. But you would say, either, I mean, rather you could say, you can go to your dad. Kasi your dad has more strategies, has more techniques to share with you in terms of solving math problems. You know? That message can 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 you know give a message to your daughter or to your son. Uh, oh, it's all about strategies. It's all about techniques and how we solve these things. Okay, praise children's processes and not their natural abilities. Okay, we know that there are defaults in our lives. There are you know some traits that are really innate, but we can do anything about it. But we can still but we can still focus on the processes, on the efforts. Okay. We can praise the efforts of our children rather than the outcome, okay? For example, they had a good grade score in math. You must say, oh, talaga ni pala ka magaling sa math. But, but, but you have to praise their efforts, the, their, their review sessions, the, the efforts that they exerted in just mastering their math quizzes. Fourth one, motivate your children or your learners with the power of yet. Okay? So, may isang sharing no? na sabi dito, what if the report cards of our children hindi lalagay yung failure or yung, 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 for example, 73, 72. Instead, they put not yet, okay? Because that's the power of yet. You're just telling the student that you can attain a good score. You can attain a passing score, but it's not yet. You need more effort to, 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 to learn this concept, okay? Because the power of yet can convey a message that people can still change. Next, encourage children to embrace failure. Again, I've mentioned a while ago that even, that's a even if that's a failure, we can still learn from it, 
we can still become aware of our limitations. We can still be aware of the things that we need to improve. That's why our learners should be encouraged to improve and to embrace failure. Because when you fail in one thing, that's not the failure of your total life. Just a failure of a single event in your life. Okay, so that's the end of my discussion. I hope you learned some ways on how to foster a growth mindset, how to develop a growth mindset to, to aid our learners, to become, you know, generate more helpful thoughts, more helpful responses in facing their academic exercises and their academic learning tasks. Thank you very much. Stay safe and stay hopeful.